Hi and welcome to Knife Chats. Today we're going to be talking about the origins of the uh, classic SD by Victorinox. The item you see here is my uh, 2018 Alps Love Classic SD by Victorinox. This is one of 10 in the 2018 limited edition collection. It seems like uh, for the last few years they've been doing these limited editions and they're really quite nice. And it got me thinking about where did the classic actually begin? And so I thought I'd go online and find out. So first stop was the SAC Wiki. Now often the SAC Wiki has quite a bit of information under history or no information at all. In this case, it had a limited amount of information. It says the classic was first introduced in 1935 without the toothpick or tweezers, which were added in 1942 to all models. And I thought, well, that's not a whole lot of information and they're really not giving any source to this. They're just saying what they've been told or something. I don't know where they got it from. So I thought I'd check out my print collection. So I looked at the uh, Swiss Army Knives uh, Collector's Companion by Derek Jackson and checked out his chronology. And uh, no mention in uh, 1935 about the uh, classic or the uh, information about the tweezers or toothpick in 1942. So I went to his page on uh, the classic that, uh, and really there wasn't a whole lot of information that he actually wrote on the classic, though there's quite a few pictures of some really nice classics and other 58 millimeter knives, but no real information on when uh, the classic actually came out in the book. Uh, so I thought I would check another book. So I went to the uh, Swiss Army Knife Owner's Manual by Michael Young and on page 134 of his chronology in 1955 it does mention that the classic model was introduced U.S. Patent 271-8695V uh, in 1955 and then it lists 1935 in question mark uh, which was kind of uh, uh, curious. And so I went to look at what was under 1935. And popping up to the top of the same page on page 134, there is no mention of anything in 1935. And uh, if you look down on 1942, once again, no mention of this toothpick and tweezer stuff either. So I was a little bit perplexed and decided I need to check some other areas. So I figured, what the heck, why not just go to the uh, Swiss Army webpage and see what they have to say about it. Well, they mentioned that the uh, original Swiss Officers and Sports Knife is patented in 1897. Uh, if we scroll down, we see no mention of the big event in 1935. Now, there might have been something missed or something, but it does mention 1945, Swiss Army knives become known all over the world. U.S. soldiers stationed in Europe buy it in large quantities and begin the popular souvenir to take home. So then I decided it's time to start looking for at original source information and see what I can find. And there's quite a few uh, Victorinox catalogs online, and actually quite a few of them are actually at the SAC Wiki. So I decided I would start looking at the catalogs and see what I can find in there. And so this is from a 1940s catalog for Victorinox, which is located at the SAC Wiki. And we see these two knives under number 620. And what we see is a uh, shiny one and a brushed one. These might be scales, I don't know for sure. This looks like um, it might be metal, I don't know. This might be fiber scales, I can't tell for sure. They're both listed as number 620 and they do bear a striking resemblance to the classic. And so I'm assuming that this is what uh, Victorinox meant when they said that it went all the way back to 1935. And maybe this catalog is from before 
1942, maybe it's a 1940 or 41 catalog. So that's why there's no toothpick or tweezer in it. But it does not have the scissors, which really makes the classic the classic. These are really closer to what we would call a princess today. Um, we also see that they had plenty of uh, three inch uh, equal end pen knives that did have scissors in them. Uh, and you notice that these have different types of scales on them, but they're also both number 54. So I'm assuming that this is what Victorinox means by the classic back in 1935 and even 1940, but it's not the classic we know and love today. Moving on, I was unable to find a 1950s catalog, but I did find the uh, 1955 patent that they were talking about. And this is the image that you see in the 1955 patent, which was actually filed November 8, 1952 by uh, Carl Elsener. And this is the U.S. patent. And what you see here is the number 620 that you saw in 1940s catalog. Um, and you see the two different blades showing it here and the way that they may be able to open and the spring that you also see in the middle. And you notice it's a very flat knife with uh, exposed uh, pins. So this is the patent that it was filing and it looks like it was more for that 1940s knife. Uh, so this is more proof that that's the knife that became the classic though at the time it really wasn't quite the classic and he does mention in the patent paperwork that uh the knife is designed so that it could be expanded so that more uh layers could be added to it and other types of blades could be added to it uh, but the initial drawing was really just for two different blades or a blade and a file and now we're into a mid-1960s catalog, also shown at the SAC Wiki. And we see two knives, and one of them definitely looks like a classic. And it's the executive, and it looks like it has cellar door handles, and uh, you got the exposed rivet still. Uh, scissor, file, little knife blade. You also see the pocket pal over here, which uh, has a small pen blade and a nail file. So this is very much like the princess. Uh, and it actually has a key ring. Notice the executive does not have the key ring yet. Um, or I should say the future classic does not have a key ring yet. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely say that this looks very much like what the classic is that we have today. Uh, not called the classic, but it's close enough. Um, but what you'd also notice is they said in 1942, they all started getting a toothpick and tweezers. Well, this does not show toothpick and tweezers and they do not mention toothpick and tweezers. So I think that information is wrong. I think uh, in 1942, a lot of other knives started getting toothpicks and tweezers, but we know well that not every Swiss Army knife had toothpicks and tweezers well into the 70s and 80s. Moving on to the early 70s, we now see the Commander, and it has, the rivets are no longer uh, showing. Um, we still see the Executive down here with the exposed rivets, but the Commander has the tweezers and it has a toothpick. It's still lacking the uh, key ring, the pocket pal, has a key ring and now we have the duchess down there which also looks very much like a, a predecessor to the classic but it has that dog bone shape but it does have a key ring so it's a uh, uh, on its way too so the duchess the executive and the commander all look like they're on their way to becoming a classic while they're none of them are actually called a classic yet we do see the uh classic end. Okay, so now we're in the later 1970s, and this is a picture from there. 35 models were featured, and we see the princess, the companion, the bijou, and the classic. So finally, we do have a knife that is actually called the classics, and it has everything that we expect in the classic. It has the key ring. It has the scissors. It has the file. 
and it has the pin blade. Not only does it have the file, it has the new style file that were that you see in the classics these days. The Bijou is very close to it, but it's lacking the uh, the key ring. And the Princess uh, is obviously a one layer knife with just a key ring. And the Companion is actually the older versions that's closer to the Model 620 than the classic. But it does kind of let us know that we can we've seen a knife evolve from the 620 to the classic and i think really what happened is around the 1970s is also when uh, a lot of copycats started coming out and uh it might be that uh victorinox decided to call this the classic so that it would seem much older than it really is. And when you consider that the design does trace back to 1935, the design itself is classic, but the way it's being presented is not necessarily um, the same as it was in 1935. So this is a modern classic. Um, and I think that's about as far back as you're going to go to find a classic laid out like a classic. So we see here the 1985 catalog with the red Celador classic with the nail file tip. And despite saying 1889, this is the 1989 catalog and it has the screwdriver tip. From what I understand, 1987 was the magic date that the screwdriver tip was added to the classic and it continued to be called the classic. It was not called the classic SD yet. And it continued to be called the classic uh, for some time after that, even though it did have the screwdriver tip. Um, and I suspect that it stopped being called the classic and became the classic SD when a certain knife appeared. So we saw in the 1989 uh, catalog that the uh, screwdriver tip was still called a classic and it was still called a classic in the 1990s so when did the screwdriver tip become a classic sd and uh i have a theory about that i could be totally wrong but my theory is it's when the edelweiss knives showed up because the edelweiss knives have an old style file with a nail cleaning tip on them and so to differentiate between the edelweiss knives and the other classics, uh, it became the classic, and the ones with the screwdriver tip became the classic SD. I could be wrong, like I mentioned, but I believe that's what happened. Uh, if I am wrong, I hope somebody will uh, mention it in the comments, uh, because, uh, and then I will correct myself. But as far as I can tell, and I have heard others say that, that the Edelweiss knives are the classic and the other ones with the screwdriver tip became the classic SD. And there would have been no reason to uh, make that change uh, or make that distinction before the Edelweiss knives came out because all of the other classics had a screwdriver tip. So where does that leave us with the origins of the uh, classic and the classic SD? Does it date back to 1935 or does it not date back to 1935? Well, I guess if you're under oath in a courtroom, you would have to say that the classic first appeared in the later 1970s. That's when you finally see it with the blade, the nail file, the scissors, the key ring, the tweezers, and the toothpick, the classic that we know and love today. But you could also argue, and this I would agree with, a knife that bears a striking resemblance to the classic showed up in the 1940s catalog. And so there's no reason to doubt that the 1935 date is uh, truthful when it comes to a classic like knife by Victorinox was made. It may not have been the classic we know today, but it was definitely the great, great grandfather of today's classic. So yes, uh, I would say that you can also argue that the classic dates back to 1935. It's just not the classic 
that you would expect to see. And it was called the number 620 at the time. So that's what I was able to find out about the uh, origins of the classic. Um, maybe I'm full of crap, I don't know, but uh, to me, uh, it was kind of fun uh, researching these little knives and finding out stuff about them. If you've got other information about the uh, classics, I'd love to hear from you, especially uh, when the Edelweiss came out. And also, if that is why the uh, Classic SD became the Classic SD. Um, I'm still not sure about that, but uh, it was nice to uh, look back and see when the Classic, as we know it today, actually showed up and uh, the origins of the Classic. And also, um, finding out that when they say that it showed up in 1935, it looked a little bit different. So really, it's the great, great grandfather of the classic. Still, uh, it was fun doing, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for dropping by, and remember, you're only as sharp as your knife.